Hey friends, it's Mari. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I have a project today for the Not Too Shabby Shop and I'm going to be using this beautiful honey bee stamp set called Everything Wonderful. When I saw this, I just absolutely had to have it. I love this floral image and this bouquet of beautiful, beautiful florals. And the sentiments on this stamp set are just awesome. You can also get a die for the floral piece. And I just want to talk a little bit too about these sentiments again. Uh, the sentiments are things like you are everything wonderful, thinking of you, praying for you uh, with sympathy and love, with gratitude, blessed to know you. I just really love the sentiments on this stamp set. I think there's so much versatility here with this um, set. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to do some coloring with my Faber-Castell Polychromos. So I'm going to start out with a really dark piece of cardstock. This is Lawn Fawn Storm Cloud. And I've trimmed out a piece of the eight and a half by 11 cardstock to half that size. So I've just cut that in half. And now I've placed that in my Misty Repositionable Stamping Tool here. And I'm stamping up the stamp with some Lawn Fawn Embossing and Watermark ink. And this ink is going to just leave that watermark on my cardstock. And now what I'm going to do is take some white embossing powder and add that onto my card and or onto my cardstock. I'm using, using a Nouveau Spoon tool uh, just to scoop up that embossing powder. I like how that works. And I really like these this specific type of container for, for holding my embossing powder. It's just really easy to get it back into that container. I will leave a link to all of the different products I'm using today in the description box down below. And you can just see there that I just used my heat tool to melt that embossing powder that's stuck to that ink and now I've let that cool just briefly and I'm ready to go in with my colored pencils. Now my idea here today is to color the entire image with my white pencil and then go over it with um, the different colors and what this does is it just adds incredible depth to your coloring because here and there you can kind of see that dark cardstock in behind and it just really gives the coloring that 3D sort of feel. It actually makes the coloring easier. So you might think, oh no, you actually have to color everything twice because you've got to go in with a white first. It actually just takes a few seconds. And the really great thing about this embossing powder is it really defines this intricate image clearly for you. And this is a really, really detailed image. So I just like the idea of embossing it so that it takes the guesswork out of where all of the details of that image are um, out of the coloring. So I really like that process. And I am going to leave a link to the um, polychromos in the description box below. I did use, and I'm going to just count them up here. I think I used about 12 different colors or so. actually more like about 17 or 18 different colors now that I'm looking at my list but for the greens I used I think three different um, colors of green and then for the pink same kind of thing I use pink matter lake fuchsia magenta and light magenta and um, so you can just I mean if you've got prisma colors use your prisma colors if you already have the polychromos, you know, obviously use the set that you have, use the colors that you have. I'm really, really spoiled. I have um, the 120 polychromos set. I also have a 60 set and I have a 12 set. I bought the 12 set first and then kind of moved my way up from there. And my sister actually gifted me the, the 120 set. So I have quite a few of these pencils. But you can see that the white also really allows, uh, um, it. it's super easy to blend and keep that highlight edge on the, wherever you want, sort of like the lightest point of your petals or your leaves to be. So I'm just blending the different colors together, going in with the darkest color close to sort of like where you want the edges to meet or wherever you feel like the darkest uh, parts of the petals or the leaves should be. And 
This is just a really, really super easy way to color up and a really intricate and detailed image like this. So I uh, really like how this worked and I'm not going to show you absolutely all of the coloring, but I'm going to show you um, just doing some of it here. So with the yellow areas, again, you just saw me go in there with the white. Now I'm going in with my lightest yellow. Then I'm going to go in with some other kind of like orangey yellow colors to add a little bit of depth to my um yellowy orange rose and you can just see how I'm just adding that there around the edges just to kind of like define the edges of that petal a little bit down at the base um, I'll go in sort of like with a middle value of yellow and add a little bit more and so on and so forth and so I will leave um, like I said I will leave a link to the all of the polychromos that I've used down below um, I will list the colors as well and then you can just sort of check that out if you want to but here I'm just showing you I went in then and I colored all of the leaves I got all of the leaves done and if there was ever a time where I wasn't really sure where the background was supposed to be coming through like where there wasn't a leaf or a petal or a berry i just used the um, drawing uh, on the packaging of the stamp set just to help me so every once in a while just as a reference i would look back to that the drawn image of the floral piece and just see like oh is that supposed to be a little bit of the background poking through or what what exactly you know where the lines are but the embossing does really help a lot with that. So I'm just going to see here, or you're just going to see me here going in, just finishing up a little bit of this yellow area, going back in and adding a little bit of that highlight white every once in a while. And I do just have my pencil sharpener off to the side here just to keep the, the uh, pencils nice and sharp. It's always nicer to work with that point of the pencil just makes the coloring a little bit easier especially in those tiny little areas now when I was all finished what I decided to do and now I left my stamp on my misty where it originally was and I decided to just go in and add just a little bit more embossing over top because especially for that pink flower I got a little bit of the color on the white emboss lines and I didn't want it to be colored I wanted the white to be really strong so I just placed the the cardstock with the um, piece in it sort of so I had already actually cut this out with the die so I just put my cardstock back into my misty where it was originally and placed this die cut piece back in the area where it was cut out from and then just stamped it and then you can see I reheat embossed it again in some of the areas where the color was on the embossing so super easy step just to crisp up that white a little bit. Now I'm going to take um, some Tim Holtz dies here. This one, it's from the Crochet Dies set. And I just love this set for card making. It's beautiful. And I wanted this to add a little bit of detail to my card. So I'm just using some patterned paper. This is from the Honey Bee Home Essentials pattern paper set. And I cut out that crochet border piece and now I'm going to add that to a little detail to the background of my card here so that's the piece that I cut that crochet die from I'm going to add that back onto my card front here in a minute so now I'm taking another piece of that storm cloud cardstock and I'm going to use that for my base and I'm just going to score it in half and then I'm going to cut this down using my Tim Holtz trimmer. So I've got that scored. I'm just going to fold that over. I'm going to use my um, Teflon bone folder here just to create a really nice crisp fold. I love that bone folder. And now I'm just going to um, just use my pencil to kind of figure out how I want, what size I want my card base to be. So I'm just going to trim this out using those pencil lines. And I am going to use that extra cardstock that I'm trimming out here for other projects. In fact, I use a piece of it here already on this project for the sentiment for the front of my card. So I will just put that extra cardstock that I'm trimming off in the package with the rest of the storm cloud cardstock so that I can use that on another project so it doesn't get wasted. Now what I did was I've also trimmed out a piece of Lawn Fawn Pixie Dust cardstock here. I really love the sparkle and shine of this cardstock. And I'm going to just take my Gina K um, tape runner here and I'm going to add this to the front of my card this is going to be the first layer for my card base or on top of my card base 
And then what I'm going to do is add that honeybee patterned paper from the Home Essentials pattern paper pack. And then that's just going to provide sort of like a lighter gray behind my floral piece here. So I'm gonna get that all stuck down here to that pixie dust paper. And I'm going to pop that floral piece up on some foam adhesive so that it, just to give it a little bit of dimension. And now what I did was I took the one of the sentiments from the stamp set and I've stamped that out. This particular sentiment says, I think it says praying for you. And I just really love that. And I like to have some sympathy cards and this sort of type of card in my stash because it seems like, sadly enough, this is a, one of the types of cards that I often have to reach for. And so I just took a piece of the Doris foam strips and added that to the back of my sentiment. Now this sentiment, I actually uh, fussy cut out. Uh, there wasn't, there isn't a die for the sentiment. So I just took my cutter B scissors and I just fussy cut around it, which actually did a really nice job. I think it's nice and straight. And I just wanted, and I've, you can see how I've also heat embossed the sentiment with that same embossing powder that I used on my floral piece. So now I'm going to just pop that sentiment up and I have popped it up, I should say, on that foam adhesive. And now I'm just going to adhere it down kind of on the lower th um, third of the card. And that way that floral piece can still really be the showstopper here and then have that sentiment there. I'm just going to bring in my T-square ruler just to make sure that I have that nice and straight. But I'll tell you, working on a grid mat also does really help with lining things up. I'm um, just showing you the finished card so far. And now what I decided I wanted to do was just take my Nouveau Shimmer pen, my Aqua Shimmer pen, and add just a little bit of shimmer and shine. Now I will tell you that this um, pen will pick up some of that, of that fabric castell pigment. So you have to use a really light hand. So just really lightly go in and drop some of that shimmer in there. And I'm just going to show you how I will do that here and there on my um, card, on my petals of my flowers. And I just really like how this looks. Uh, these types of stamps are, I, I love them. I love the intricacy. I love these beautiful florals. Sometimes we look at those and we think, oh, but there's going to be so much coloring involved. This technique of using the dark cardstock with the white pencil is actually a really, really super easy way to color these really intricate stamps and by using that embossing technique and having the lines really well defined for you it actually makes it super super easy so this was not hard to do um time wise probably took me maybe two hours in total to create this card start to finish um, with all of the die cutting the coloring and everything included and that's also uh filming it so it always takes a little bit longer when I'm filming, starting the filming process, you know, being sure that my camera's on, all that kind of stuff. Um, please make sure you check out the links in the description box below to the Not Too Shabby Shop. There's actually a coupon code there for you. Don't forget all the deals that uh, Jamie offers in the Not Too Shabby Shop, including um, if you're ordering in bulk, she does offer a shipping discount to the U.S. Um, lots of other little cool perks in her shop. Make sure you check it out and check out all of the things that I use to create my card. They are listed in the description box below. Thank you so much. If you like my project, please don't forget to hit the, the thumbs up. Have an amazing day and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.